Hi, it's France. Welcome back for this new journal on Monday, which I am starting today with this uh, map from an old atlas. It's an atlas from 1950, which I bought a couple of years ago with the intention of using the pages as image transfer. Now, this is a PBO image transfer product that I'm using because despite all my attempts to use these pages as transfer with a golden media or other media, it doesn't want to work. And I think it's because the paper is quite thick and I think there's a seal on it uh, to keep the, the color on the, on the maps. So I'm cheating in another way today. This is the first layer. I'll have to add two more afterwards to use it as a transferred image. In my journal, I'm starting with a layer of gesso, just because I want to hide all the other colors that I've been picking through from other pages. Cleaning up what has been messed on the other page, trying it just a bit. And then going back in with an acrylic paint, which is white buff by Golden, because I don't want the white to be too white. Now the gesso isn't completely dry, I don't know if you can see it, but um, the white is still peeking through, which I think it's, it's pretty cool. So I'm doing this because as my map will be a transferred image, I don't want the white underneath to be too harsh. With this white buff it will be softened down. While it's drying, I'm getting ready for uh, another layer on my page, punching out some tabs and adding some distress ink on the edges. Now this is a very special page to me as it is week 52 of my journal on Monday, which I'm very very happy for and I'm happy that I can share it with you all, but it's also... Um, my third anniversary of uh, my accident today which isn't well you you could think it's not a very happy anniversary but to me it is because it's the day i survived so this page is very important it really has a a double meaning and i'm i don't know what i'm going to do when i start the page but i know i want this meaning to be in it this double meaning back to the page trying it a bit more so that I can cut an edge, because I want to make uh, a little pocket to put my three tags in. Well, it's the third anniversary, so three tags. I'm taking out uh, a double piece of um, the next page, which I will be using as the tags. So I want to have enough space for my journal to, um, to close, even with the tags inside it. And I don't want to throw this paper away, so I'm using it as tags. But I'm, I'm using it in double layer so that it's thick enough. Because otherwise, as a tag, the paper would be too thin and it would, would uh, tear up immediately when you try to put it in or take it back out. Punching the corners away. With a little help of my scissors. And doing the same on the page. Now I can start colorizing these. So first a bit of water and then I'm going in with my Colorex by PBO. As you can see they're very rich in color. Um, these are water soluble and they're very popular to colorize with, uh, used with a, a brush. And doing the same on the back side of my tags. As you can see, I'm trying to pick up as much of the color as I can. And drying it. <clears throat> Adding some splatches, again with the color X, directly from the bottle. Picking up whatever is left on my desk. And adding a bit of distress ink on the edges.
Now I can put my tabs in place so that these really look like tags. And that's why I punched the corners away because otherwise they would be visible. Which I didn't want. So this way they fit neatly inside the tabs. Now these will be used for journaling later on. And I have three, tabs be three tags because I do have a lot to, to write about. I'm adding some stitches on the edges of my tags just to add a bit of um, texture to them. And now I'm wondering how they will fit in my book. Maybe I should have thought about that earlier, but that's okay. I want to add a bit of white acrylic paint to remind the white of um, the number stickers that I added on them. Bubble wrap, bit of bubble wrap, adding the white paint and going very softly because I want to write on them so I'm keeping it very soft. Adding some water so that I can also add some white splashes on. Okay, I can go back in with the second layer. Now, they say it should dry for two hours. And I have been cheating in, um, in the way that my layers are very, very thin. Which wasn't such a good idea. I should have put on a thicker layer and be a bit more patient. But me and patience, well, we don't work together very well. So it did work out in the end, but I should have um, laid down a thicker layer than I did. Putting it aside again so that it can dry and going back to see how I'm going to make this work. Okay, I decided I wanted to add some printed paper behind those tags. I don't want to leave the paper, the page just simply uh, white or yellow in its natural color. But I don't want to colorize it because I don't want it to move too much. I want it to stay pretty flat. So here's a piece of paper that I'm cutting at the right size so that I can glue it down behind my tags. This will also reinforce my pocket will make it a bit stronger than just one single page of paper. Again, the corners. And adding some distress ink, some black soot, to hide all the imperfections, because my two papers weren't really um, neatly glued together, so I'm cheating a bit. Now I'm adding my double-sided tape so that later on I can just glue down my pocket when I'm done with the front side of it. Checking if my journal still closes is a good idea too. Maybe I should have checked that before too. Then I'm adding some Colorex splatters on um, the acrylic paint. But while I was doing it, I thought that it might be a bit too harsh. So I'm taking it down, first with a dry uh, piece of um, tissue paper, then with a, a wet one. Now the camera doesn't really pick it up, but 
you can still see the splatters, so they do shine through my transfer image in, in the end. And then going for the third layer, and as you can see, I even cheated with my heat gun. So the instruction of leaving it to dry for two hours really wasn't taken seriously by me. <laughs> Now I left it to dry. After this, and here I am back with my uh, completely dried image that has a transfer code on top of it. Now you can see how it uh, actually works. So I'm cutting it down because I have to put it in water and my page is too big. Here's my water, the image go it goes inside. It's actually the same principle as a transfer image on packaging tape. The only difference is that I'm not limited to the size of my packaging tape. As I'm putting the product on with a brush, I can go with a really big image. And then it's a game of patience to take all the paper away on the back side. Now, when doing this with packaging paper, I like to uh, packaging tape. Sorry, I like to keep the tape in the water because it's easier to take it off. But with this product, um, it looked easier outside the water in the end. And here it is, completely cleaned up. Trying it a bit more, cleaning again. <laughs> And here is my image. As you can see, it's um, it's a big sheet of plastic actually with the image on it, but it's such a fun texture in the end. I think this is something I will use uh, a lot more. I'm using Bindex to glue it down because it's very easy to put on the paper in a smooth and thin layer so that I don't have any bubbles underneath my transferred image. I wish I could make you feel the image. It, it really has a, a very, very fun and nice texture. It's a very soft plastic um, thing. <laughs> now, as you can see, I did rip a piece, but that's okay, once it's glued down, you won't see anything of that anymore. Securing everything, adding some more glue if necessary. And then cutting it down so that it fits the page nicely. I wanted to blend down the edges a bit because my transferred image was a bit smaller than the pages of my journal, so I used a bit of gesso on the edges to blend both together. And I thought it was looking so cool that in the end I decided to put gesso just about everywhere. Hop! There you go. And then blending it with a um, baby wipe. You can try this image too much because it's still plastic in the end, so you don't want to melt it. This is VersaFine ink, just to add a bit of an edge. I really like this color, it's a smoke grey. It's a very, very nice color. Gluing down my pocket and getting ink all over my hand. So. I'm taking the axes off and putting my tags in place.
This is a file I use to keep uh, scraps and pieces of paper I've used to pick up excess ink or paint. And there, that's where I found the this image that I wanted to use, which I've just printed uh, on my regular printer after finding these images on the internet. This is a piece of printed paper, which you'll see is pretty cool because it's by October afternoon and they already punched uh, the paper, so you just have to take out whatever it is you want to take out. These are all little numbers. If you want the name of the paper, you can find it on my blog. Adding some distress ink. A bit of water. And then drying it, which makes the, people look, the paper look um, old. And that's the point. Talking about my blog, don't miss out on the big giveaway tomorrow for the first anniversary of my journal on Monday and for the third anniversary of my accident. I prepared a very big giveaway for you all, so if you want to take a chance at winning some of my all-time favorite supplies, check out my blog, France Papillon, and well, good luck to you all! I'm securing my image with my tiny attacher by Tim Holtz and some glue, but then I change my mind and take it back off, partially. Because I remember that I have a very fun traveling ticket by Tim Holtz, which I wanted to add. This is um, the wording and it says what does it say? It says, a butterfly is a caterpillar with a positive attitude, which is a wording that I found in uh, Jeff Gittimer's uh, little gold book of Yes Attitude, a book which I really, really loved reading. I'll add the, um, the references on my blog too, if you want to find it. Again, trying to make it look a bit older, so adding some Distress Ink. Using my Distressing tool to distress the edges. A quick spray of water, drying it, and to make it look even more distressed, I'm folding it and then adding some Distress, inks, distress Ink on the folds. Now, that looks like a ticket you could find um, in your pocket. Getting my date stamp ready with some archival ink, so that I don't have to take out my distress ink again at the end, so that I can do it all in once. This video is about 25 minutes, a bit less, and uh, in real time it took me two hours to make my spread. Now to make uh, the page, the spread work together with my tags, I'm adding some white uh, stains with my bubble wrap. And as I still have paint left over, I'm using my mini art journal um, in which I use those excess of paints, those leftovers. And now I can put everything in place, 
with the ticket going underneath the photo. It's a bit too big, so well, I'm just tearing it in two so that, I, that it can fit underneath the photo. I'm refilling my tiny attacher as it's empty so that I can attach the rest of the image. Holding it down for 10 seconds so that the glue has some time to get a hold on everything. That's the fun thing with tacky glue. You can glue just about anything on just about anything with it. If you apply a 10 seconds pressure on it, it will stay in place. Adding a bit of um, doodling around my text and then after a good look, changing my mind and taking it back off. As I'm working on my transferred image, with, which has a plastic feel to it, I can go back in with a baby wipe and just wipe it away. I found these cuffs um, in, a, in a shop where you can buy supplies to make handmade jewelry and I thought it was so funny to find cuffs there. Now they've been laying around on my table for ages, so now I decided this is where they will go. Don't ask me why. <laughs> That's just how it is. Don't overthink it. <laughs> uh, some black acrylic paint to add some splatters. And I wanted to show you how I keep my acrylic paint. Just in these little jars with a lid on it. I have a white one like this and a black one like this because those are uh, the two colors I use the most in splatters so that I don't have to mix them up every time again. They keep quite long and even if they dry out a bit, you just add some water and you can use them again. This is a rub-on. I decided to add some black accents at the bottom of my page. Now, just like last week, as my page is quite irregular, it's not easy to have a neat image, which is very good for me. This is stays on, adding some ink on the edges again to make it a bit more grungy. Even on the pocket. After this, all that I have left to do is add my journaling on my three tags, which was quite a bit because I had a lot to tell on this page. Um, after all, it's a three year story, so. Um, I like to add it in black first and go over it in white because I like the look of it. No other reason to that. I hope you liked today's videos. Hope to see you back next week with a new one. And meanwhile, live happily. Ta-da!